Hello again and welcome back to my shop. I live in the Midwest. All around me are cornfields and I've seen other people turn corn cob pens. This year I followed a combine and I grabbed a bag full of corn cobs that uh, came out of the back of the combine. My objective was to see if I could take a simple corn cob and turn it into an ink pen. During my research, um, I read a lot about needing a pressure pot and cactus juice and, and a lot of other ideas for how to stabilize a corn cob. What I decided to do was use a product called Wood Hardener by Minwax. So let's get started and I'll show you the entire process and just how well it worked out. I started by picking out what I considered to be some of the nicer cobs. If you take a look at the ends, you can see there are no splits. It's not, it's not been crushed. When a cob goes through the combine, a lot of times it will I guess as it puts pressure on the cob to strip the corn off of it, uh, it will split the cob. And I'm staying away from these and sticking with the, the cobs that have a, a nice solid core. I'm going to be making some slimline pins. So I'm going to start out with a standard slimline tube. And I'm just going to basically measure out some of these cobs and cut the cobs into segments a little bit longer than the standard tube. I plan to make uh, quite a few more sections than I need. I really would like to make two, maybe three pins. So I'm going to have quite a few sections from these cobs. Uh, and the idea is I've never done this before. I'm kind of experimenting and learning as I go. So I'm expecting to have some failures or some issues and probably have to pitch a couple of them. But I'm going to go ahead and, and make extras so that um, throughout the process, if one gets messed up, I can just grab another one. I was really surprised at how these cobs cut. Uh, it actually felt like I was cutting through a piece of wood, albeit very soft wood. Um, I've been researching on the internet, trying to decide the best way to stabilize these. And of course, a lot of people were telling me, uh, you know, use a, use a pressure pot and use cactus juice. And there's a lot of ways to do that. And some of them get kind of expensive. So I was looking for an inexpensive way to harden these up uh, for turning. And uh, I found a pin turning site on Facebook and there was a mention by a gentleman. I can't remember which site it was. There were only three that I use. So it was one of the three. Um, I'll list them down below. If you happen to be on Facebook and want to join those groups, um, you can do so. And a gentleman mentioned this product, Wood Hardener by Minwax. So what I decided to do is I'm going to take this wood hardener and I stopped by my local dollar store and I picked up some of these little bins and they were a dollar for three of them. I'm going to lay out some of my cobs in the bottom of here and I'm going to pour in some wood hardener and enough to cover them. I'm going to let them soak for 24 hours. I'm going to take them out tomorrow and then uh, we'll let them dry for a few days and then we'll continue on with drilling the cobs out and gluing up the tubes and, and attempting to turn them into pens. I've got the cobs in the bottom of my little container here. Now I just want to take some of this uh, hardener and basically I'm going to pour it over them and try to get it to the same level as the cobs. And then I'm just going to put them uh, aside and let them soak overnight. Just a quick update for you. Um, I had laid these cobs out on a piece of newspaper to dry and they were losing quite a bit of liquid. It was draining out of them and I thought well I'll go ahead and stack them on end in one of these spare containers and then I can catch that liquid and uh, basically I can uh, put it back in the container see it's quite a bit coming out of there I can put that back in the container and use that for hardening some more cobs in the future no sense wasting it uh, letting it just drain out on the paper so after letting them dry for a short period of time I begin laying them on some towels uh, and as the towel gets saturated, I just simply replace it with a new towel. Um, it, I, I don't know how well it's going to work on these. They're, they're heavier and they feel pretty solid. But I will tell you that the towels became extremely stiff. So I don't know. Maybe I should roll up some paper towels and put them in the wood hardener and try turning those. We'll see. But um, so far, it seems to be working well. I'm just going to let them dry because they're very damp. You can feel it. Uh, give them a few days to dry. And then we're going to come back and make an ink pen. My corn cobs have been drying for several days. And they actually feel pretty good. They're not damp anymore. They're relatively solid. They feel, well, they feel like a piece of wood. Uh, so I'm going to take them over to the drill press and I'm going to drill the centers out and uh, glue some tubes in there and see if we can't uh, get one step closer to making an ink pen out of these. Well, 
doing not bad. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but I stayed pretty well in the center. The wood hardener has done a nice job. I mean, they're it, it's just like a piece of wood, albeit a, it may be a punky piece of wood, but uh, not too bad. Let me drill a few more of these out and we'll get some tubes glued in. I am extremely happy with how these corn cobs drilled out. I was able to go right down the middle on every one of them and didn't veer off. I thought for sure I'd lose a couple during the drilling process, but uh, with the way they turned out, I'm going to have quite a few blanks uh, that I'm going to glue up. So I've hopefully they turn well and I may end up with quite a number of pins. I'm going to use Gorilla Glue uh, to glue my tubes in because it does foam a little bit. And uh, there are some, I mean, obviously it, this is not a smooth surface, so hopefully it'll grip uh, really well inside of the cob. I'm extremely happy. I did not think I would have this many blanks make it this far along in the process. Um, I still have all my blanks. Every one of them took a tube very nicely, except one. And the only reason why this blank wouldn't take a tube is because it was just too short. So the tube would have stuck out past the end, so I didn't attempt to glue it up. I did use this one for a test. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, but my barrel trimmer actually works just fine. These are hard enough to where the barrel trimmer did a really nice job and squared up the end. So I'm going to go real slow using my barrel trimmer and using my pin vise, and I'm going to attempt to trim these up, and we'll see how many of them make it through that process. And once we get them trimmed up, I'm ready to start putting them on the lathe. I don't have the vise cranked down really tight because I don't want to crush these. So I'm going to kind of hold them by hand at the same time. Just trying to go real slow and get down to right there where I can see the tube. Okay, that went well. Let's see if we can do the other side. This will be a little tricky because uh, the glue has kind of bubbled up into the tube. But let's see what happens. There we go. Let me stop, crank it just a little tighter. I didn't tighten it down because I wanted to be able to square it up first or center it up first. And there we are. I cut these blanks extra long and you can see it did a really nice job. That's nice and flat to the tube on both ends. Um, got a little bit of the glue in there, but I'll poke that out with a dowel rod. This blank's ready for the lathe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off. I'm going to trim up the rest of them. And as I put them on the lathe, I'll let you know how many of them made it versus how many didn't. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed they all make it. This has uh, been a lot of fun. I'm really happy. I was able to get five complete sets of corn cobs trimmed up and ready for the lathe. Um, I had one that I lost while I was trimming it, and you can see it blew apart. Uh, what happened is this was the end of the cob of corn, uh, and there wasn't much of a core in there to bite into, so I lost that. But I'm going to hang on to this because I may I may try cleaning that off, maybe putting another band on there or something uh, later on if I if if I. Uh, come up with any good ideas and this was the original one that was just a little too short so I lost and both of those were the tips of cobs so that's all I lost the rest of them worked out uh, perfectly the thing that I'm happiest about is I now have five attempts at turning a cob so I can afford to blow one or two and hopefully out of these five sets I could come up with at least one decent corn cob pin I got my first set of corn cob blanks chucked up I'm really looking forward to turning them. I don't know what's going to happen. I've been fairly lucky so far. Um, one comment that I will make, next time I make these, and I will make them again, um, I'm going to try to improve on my process, but next time I make these, I will not use Gorilla Glue to glue the tubes into the cobs. And the main reason why is with Gorilla Glue, you have to dampen it first before you apply the glue. That sort of gets the glue, uh, gets the glue working. I think I'd go straight to CA Glue because... What I notice is when I put the Q-tip in there to dampen the inside of the blanks, um, it kind of started to give a little bit. 
and I'm worried that that may hurt me in the long run, CA glue would have gone right in and hardened the inside of the blank at the same time gluing it to the tube. So I think that would have been a much better um, option, and I will use that next time around. Corn cobs are turning fairly well. I am just taking the lightest possible cuts that I can take uh, in an effort not to, you know, gouge into them. Uh, but they seem to be turning okay. I'm going to uh, readjust my tool rest, get it a little closer, and uh, go at it again. And like I said, nice light cuts. I'll leave my shop vac off and kind of maybe I can talk through this a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I, I think I'm going to change my mind and get that shop back back on. This is creating quite a bit of dust, and uh, we're going to try to keep as much of that down as possible. So I'm going to apologize for the noise, but I'll stop periodically, and you know, if anything changes, I'll let you know. Well, everything was going pretty well. I was to the point where I was getting ready to move to a skew and I caught the front or the tip of the front blank with the corner of my roughing gouge as I was bringing this down and took a nice big chunk out of it. Uh, I'm not sure if I can fix that, but uh, I'm darn sure going to try. So let me get my skew and see what I can do. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to round that off just a little more there. And I think I can trim that piece of tube off since this is a slim line. You know, if it's a little bit shorter, um, you can work that out when you put the, put the pin together. So just a little more work on that. Wow, I'm liking how this is turning out. I'm just going to go ahead and clean up the ends here, and uh, I think we're ready to start trying some finish. I've cleaned out the kernels from each of these divots and now I'm just going to put a dot of CA in each one of them. This would be a fun blank and, and I think I'm going to do this in the future, but this would be a really fun blank to fill with something. And I, I wouldn't want to use turquoise, it'd be too expensive to put on something like this, but any type of a, of a less expensive substance would be fun to fill these uh, little holes in this blank with you'd get a pretty cool looking blank shoot a little accelerator on there um, now i will tell you um, i shot the accelerator but i am going to let this blank set and dry for a long period of time because that's pretty thick and if i go ahead and attempt to turn it after shooting that accelerator on there i break the surface of the uh, accelerator where it, or of the uh, ca where it's uh, sort of um, uh, it's dry on top, but it's wet beneath. It's going to throw CA all over me. So I'm going to let it finish drying overnight. The CA or the accelerator is just so I can turn it and keep moving along and filling all of the blanks. So I'm going to continue to fill this and I'll come back when I'm ready to finish turning it. I've got all of the divots filled on this blank. I think it looks pretty darn good. Um, I've shot it a couple of times with accelerator and uh, it's, it's starting to seal. I'm going to let it finish drying and then we're going to come back and uh, I'll lightly turn it with my tool and then I'll sand it down and we'll put a couple coats of CA on it and uh, it should look pretty darn sweet. I'm really excited about how this is turning out. I've given the CA glue plenty of time to dry. Now what I want to do is just make a few light passes with my tool and try to take some of the roughness off. I don't know how well you can see that on the camera, but obviously you put a dot of glue in there and you hit it with some accelerator and you've got a little bump. So I want to take those down, make them nice and smooth, and then we'll evaluate the blank and see if there's any more repairs to be done to it. Hopefully there won't be, and we'll be able to go ahead and start sanding and, and uh, finishing this pin up. I got a couple of just tiny little divots, uh, nothing major, a quick dot of CA and a shot of accelerator. They'll be cleaned up and uh, I'll be ready to start sanding. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with that blank. It had three little spots. I don't really see anything else. I think the back one looks good. Take a look at the front one now. I know there was a spot. There it is, right, maybe right there. Hole right there. Must have been an air bubble in my CA. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. All right. I'm going to let her set and dry for a little bit, and then we'll come back, clean those up. I'm, I'm not sure. I may just go ahead and 
go with the sandpaper since there's only three dots on the back one and what two on two or three on the front one. I may just go ahead and go with sandpaper and uh, just sand them down instead of getting the tool back out. I'll take a look at it in a couple of minutes when she's dry. The blank appears to be dry to the touch. I'm not feeling any more tackiness from the super glue. It's been sitting for a little while. I'm going to go ahead and run through my grits of sandpaper from about 150 up to about 400. Uh, then we'll take a look at it and see how she looks. Uh, at that point, we may opt to go ahead and start applying our CA glue. Got the blank sanded down to 400. Looks pretty good. Feels like glass. I'm going to go ahead and start applying several coats of CA. <laughs> Blank's looking really good. I'm trying to apply from opposite directions because this tapers off so much um, that I, I have a little bit of trouble getting down beside the bushings. I didn't want to make you watch the boring exercise of applying the CA glue. Um, I applied six coats of CA glue to both blanks and then I sanded it with my micro mesh and then I came back and applied three more coats. Um, it looked really good so I went ahead and grabbed my one step polish and I polished up the front and the back blank and I'm extremely happy with how they've turned out. I'm going to go ahead and get them off the lathe and press them into a pin kit and I'll come back and show you what they look like. And here's the finished pin. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, you'll notice I did not include a clip because the back blank is so fat the clip would not have fit properly or looked right. This pin is not overly aesthetically pleasing but this was a a concept proving video. My main objective was to see if I was actually going to be able to stabilize and turn a corn cob blank. A couple of things that I want to point out um, and that I learned from the video is you'll want to go with the smaller diameter corn cobs if you're turning a slimline pin. If you happen to be turning a larger pin, uh, one that has you know a larger tube, maybe a 10 millimeter tube or a 3 8 tube in it, um, it's okay to use these thicker blanks. Otherwise, you're going to end up uh, like I did with a, a rather unusually large blank. You don't want to turn it down much farther than this because then you start losing all of your detail. The other thing I want to make mention of is I use Gorilla Glue to glue my tubes inside of the corn cob blanks. And what I noticed was uh, as I put the moisture in there, uh, there was a little bit of a deterioration going on. Now, luckily, the Gorilla Glue swelled up, and as it dried, there was no issue, but I would recommend going with CA glue or uh, possibly epoxy to glue your tubes inside your blanks. Once again, this was uh, proving a concept that it would work. Uh, it did work. I'm extremely excited because not only did it work, but I still have four additional sets of corn cob blanks here. So I plan to turn some more pins. And what I think I'm going to do in the future is these divots that I filled or these where the kernels were, uh, instead of filling them with CA glue, I'm going to try filling them with another substance and then CA gluing that into uh, those divots just to see if I can get kind of a different effect with the pin. Um, very excited that this process worked out and uh, I'd love to hear your comments on it. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today in the shop. I really hoped you enjoyed this video. I had a great time making this pen because truthfully, I had no clue whether it would work or not. It was just fun to try new things. And I ended up with a great looking pen and I've got some awesome ideas for ways to really accent this pen and make, make them look just amazing in the future. So you might see another video if I come up with something really cool, but uh, I hope you like what you saw today. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you really liked what you saw, share this video with your friends. If you're not a subscriber, click that subscribe button down below and all of my new videos will be delivered directly to your feed. If you happen to be on Facebook, please look me up, RJB Woodturner, like my page, and you can follow along with fun projects like this uh, that I'm working on in the shop. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me today and I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again sometime real soon.